This little gadget is the latest bit of tech from Nog. It has an 85 decibel alarm. Up to six months battery life, only weighs 22 grams, and will help you find your bike if someone steals it. But does it really work? Can it really help me find a bike if someone steals it? Well, let's put it to the test. I recently went to a trade show here in the UK, Manchester Velodrome, all very exciting. I had a whole video planned for the day. Pete's the camera in the car with me driving there, telling you everything we can expect from the show. Slow motion footage of riders riding around the Velodrome. And then me walking around the show, showing you all the latest goodies. But if I'm honest, the whole thing was a little bit underwhelming. Don't get me wrong, there were some fantastic brands being represented and some really good products on display. But nothing new, groundbreaking or exciting. Yes, Shimano was there showing off their Dura Ace Delights, as were Park Tall with their Blue Handle Beauties. But nothing you've not seen before or may already even own. I was around the show in no time. I think I spent more time getting there than I did being there. What was that saying cyclists love to come out with? No, yeah, you're stuck in traffic. You are traffic. As a matter of fact, when I think about it, I know I did. So there I was, heading for the door, when I passed my last stand, Nog. Now I'm a big Nog fan. I've been using their products for years. I bought my first Nog lights nine years ago, and I'm still using them today. So I popped over for a chat. I didn't expect to see anything revolutionary, just some really good quality bike lights. But then Colin showed me this, the Scout Bike Alarm and Finder. It's a small lightweight bike alarm that utilizes the Apple Find Me network, but you don't need an air tag. He moved the bike in front of him and it gave off an ear piercing screech and his mobile phone lit up like a Christmas tree. Now that is the sort of thing I went to the show for. So what is a Scout? Well, it is an 85 decibel alarm a bike locator, which I will be testing, has a battery life of up to six months, which is rechargeable via USB. It only weighs 22 grams and has a waterproof rating of IP66. So it's fundamentally two things, a bike alarm to let you know that somebody may be trying to steal your bike and a tracker if they do. So let's look at those two things in a little more detail. First up, the bike alarm. You're out on your bike and you pull in to your favorite cafe. And using something like this, you do the best you possibly can to secure your bike. In you go and queue for your food. And what should be going through your mind is, hmm, shall I have the beans on toast or the bacon butty? But what's actually going through your mind is, is my bike all right? Does anyone touch my bike? I can't see my bike. They could just cut that thing with a pair of wire cutters. The Scout has a motion activated alarm via a gyroscopic chip. If someone touched your bike and you've got one of these, you'll know about it. So what about the whole bike locator part? Well, the Scout uses Apple's Find My technology, which Apple made open source not long ago. So this means trusted brands like Nog can utilize Apple's Find My without the user having to spend money on an AirTag. Let's fit it to a bike. This is the bike I'm going to be fitting the Scout to. My own personal pride and joy, my summer bike. The only thing that remains of the original bike is the frame, the forks, the seat post, and the handlebars. And these are my Pinarello Most Jaguar 3K carbon handlebars that have been sat on a shelf behind the camera for six months, waiting for me to find some time to fit them to my pride and joy. So to the chap who commented on one of my videos the other day saying I've got too much time on my hands, oh, you think so, do you? So Nog has designed the Scout to be mounted on your frame on a bottle cage mount, either a disused bottle cage mount or sandwiched between the bottle cage and the frame, which is the option I'm gonna go for. And I'm gonna be mounting mine on the seat tube because my logic is I use that 
cage the least, so there's less chance of me spilling drink on it. And I also believe that it might be easier to get to the charge port when it's there like that, as opposed to being tucked down there. Now, the kit comes with anti-tamper screws, so the bad guy can't easily remove it. But anti-tamper screws need an anti-tamper tool. So make sure you put that somewhere safe, don't lose it. And one final point, it comes with this little brightly colored silicon boot that will give your scout a little more protection, but it will also add as an advertising thing to show people that you are using one of these. Right, I'll get this stuck on my bike. So there you go, that's my one fitted, a really simple job to do, so I didn't bother filming, there's no point, it's there. And with this particular bike with the black on black, you'd hardly know it was there, very discreet indeed. Let's look at the alarm function first. What I've done is I've raised the bike off of the ground a little bit, just so you can see what I'm doing. It's not a massively tall bike. Okay, so as mentioned previously, the system comes with a companion app, and you can use this for functions like checking battery level, connectivity, firmware version. But what you can also do is you can adjust the sensitivity of the alarm, as well as adjusting how the alarm notifies you with regards to volumes, notification sound types, such and so forth. And another great little function is you can disable the audio on the alarm itself. And what this basically means in the event that the alarm is activated, it will notify you to your phone, but the bike itself won't make a sound. You arm or disarm the alarm either via the companion app or you can also do it directly from the unit. Obviously, to be able to do it directly from the unit, your phone needs to be in very close proximity of the bike. I think it's something like a meter or a meter and a half. Okay, so let's activate the alarm again and give it a quick test. So the alarm will give a polite little chirp if it's given a slight nudge, like that, but if it's given a large movement, then you'll get a full alarm activation. That is your full 85 dB from the bike, as well as a screaming alarm to your mobile phone. It's really loud. So the Nog Scout sounds very loud in my workshop with its low roof, but how does it sound in the real world? Well, let's go and give it a try. Glorious sunny day. Maybe we can say that spring is here. Dare we say it? Right, okay, so according to my iPhone, my bike, which is just over there, I'm not sure if you can see it, is roughly 100 feet away, and I'm currently connected to it. So let's see if we can arm and disarm the alarm. Armed and disarmed. So we can activate and deactivate in, okay, I would admit it is a perfect environment because it's a nice clear day, and it's direct line of sight, but we can activate and deactivate the alarm within a hundred foot. Right, so now let's see, let's go and activate the alarm, set it off, and then come back over here and see how loud it is. Right, let's switch it on and I'll go and set it off. Okay, so back at the bike, let's set the alarm off and then go back to that bench over there, which is roughly 100 foot away, and see if we can hear it from over there. So, first of all, let's set it off. Right. Let me clear the notification off my phone. Right, and there we are, 100 foot away from it. And I can still hear it. And yeah, it is quite annoying, so yeah outside obviously it's not as loud as you would have indoors but yes still loud enough to be very annoying right so now let's have a look at the really clever bit the finder so as i was saying earlier the scout uses the apple find my network in a similar way to an air tag by communicating with other Apple devices it interacts with and reporting its location. The only difference between the Scout and an AirTag is an AirTag also has the ultra wide bandwidth. And what this basically means is once you are on, almost on top of the AirTag, you can use your mobile phone as a compass to fine tune and locate where the device is. 
but at the end of the day, this is a bike and not a set of car keys. So I don't see that as being a big issue. And additionally, you can use the chirp function within Find My or the alarm function within the Nog app to activate the alarm and then you'll hear it. And I think the only way we can truly test if this technology works is to let somebody steal this bike. So what I will do is I will let them steal it, give them a 30 minute head start, and then we will use this technology to see if we can recover the bike. Okay, so the rules. The bike thief is given a 30 minute head start and they're allowed to use their car. They can go off in any direction. I genuinely have no idea where they're gonna go. Now this particular bike thief has got an iPhone, so they're going to have to turn their Bluetooth off, otherwise that would give this device an unfair advantage. Now, I know what car this bike thief drives, so their final place needs to be out of sight of their car, otherwise I'd just recognize it, wouldn't I? Now, the alarm on the bike will go, apparently, for 30 minutes. I've not tried it, it's just too painful on the ears. It will go for 30 minutes. And we can't really expect our volunteer bike thief to put up with an alarm for 30 minutes. So we are going to deactivate the siren on the bike. Right, I'm in the car and the bike stealing baddie has got a 30 minute head start on me. Now I genuinely have no idea where they've gone. I don't even know whether they turned left or right when they set off. I haven't got a clue. But also, I've not actually tested this yet, so I have no idea if this technology is going to work. So I've got my phone, let's unlock it, and open the Nog app, and red button at the bottom will open Apple's Find My. There you go, and it is saying, it's in a place called Bridge End. So, what I then do is I click on the device, click on directions and it has now loaded Apple's navigation. So let's click go and it's saying go to the top of the road and turn left. Right, so let's go. Right, so it turns out that our baddie hasn't gone that far. Uh, according to this, it's 1.2 miles. I'm using today is a new one. I have ditched the GoPro. I got bored of all the GoPro problems. I got in touch with a friend of mine, the Lake District cyclist, or as I like to call him, Dave. And he does a lot of stuff to, to use it in an action camera up in the Lake District, going over all the big passes and stuff. So I got in touch with Dave and I said, Dave, what camera do I need? Because I'm sick of the GoPro problems. And Dave has recommended that I get this camera, which is the DJI Osmo Action. And I must admit, first impressions are, it is very, very good. Speed camera ahead. Oh, speed camera ahead, that's handy. Uh, yeah, so, massive thank you to Dave, the Lake District Cyclist. If you're into like Lake District Cycling and stuff, check his channel out. I'll put a, a link in the description below. Right, now, let's go and see if we can recover my stolen bike. Hang on a second, I've gone the wrong way. I don't do Apple's navigation, I use Google Maps. At the roundabout, take the right. second exit. Now the problem is, it uses Apple's navigation to where the device was last seen. I'm going to have to use Find My to actually find where it is. Arrived. Right, it's saying my stolen bike is somewhere around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to park up and then fire up the Find My to see if I can find my bike. Right, engine off. Mobile phone, glasses, because I'm a blind get, get the Nog app, do the find mic, 
and apparently it's just over there somewhere. So let's see if we can go and find it. Right, so according to my phone, it should be here somewhere. Right, so what it's telling me is I need to go through over here, which is some kind of conservation area or something. Could be further down. Let's go and have a look. According to my phone, the bad is in a field that way. Right. This is saying where we need to be. Things was behind me. Some kind of conservation area over here. <sighs> One baddie. <laughs> Too big for me anyway. <laughs> so the baddie decided to uh, hide in a field in the middle of nowhere. So it took me a, I'm, I reckon it's taken me a good 40 minutes to find them. But that's hardly surprising because the, phone, the technology relies on an iPhone and there was no iPhones nearby so I'm assuming that someone's pulled into this car park here or something and that has activated it and that is how I found them and that's why it's taken me roughly 40 minutes to find them. Right back at the car. So yes, the bike has been recovered. Now what the bike thief did was they came to this supermarket car park and they parked in a parking space very close to where I'm parked now. But then they took the bike out and wheeled it into a conservation area, literally yeah, a, a few hundred meters over there. But by doing that, they then went out of the signal of any mobile phones. So, I, so the navigation system brought me to this point where the bike was last seen, but that wasn't where the bike was. And I was basically wandering around the supermarket car park thinking, why can't I find them? And it kept telling me the last point it was seen was right here but then all of a sudden 20 minutes later it changed its location and it went that few hundred meters over there so what I can only assume was that somebody either with an iPhone went near them or pulled a car pulled up not far from them so it doesn't show you real time where the where the bike is obviously because it's reliant on the, on, a, on a iPhone uh, to, to locate it so if, for example, you were trying to track the, the bike and it was in a car, for example, traveling along a motorway, you've got no chance. I think what you've basically got to rely on is you've got to rely on the bike to be in the same location for a set period of time before the Apple Find My technology then tells you where to go. So for 20 minutes or so, it was quite frustrating trying to work out where the bike was. Well, that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? It's nice to get out, get a bit of sunshine and a bit of fresh air. OK, so what do I think of the Nog Scout? Well, first of all, the alarm. It's simple to use and very effective. You can fine tune its sensitivity. You can adjust the way it notifies you. Just the bike alarm goes off or the bike and the phone goes off or just your phone goes off. Agreed. It's not as loud as say a house alarm or a car alarm, but at 85 decibels, it is loud enough for people to stand back and say, hmm, that's not right. You know, somebody walked down the road with your bike with that thing going off, people should question what's going on. The bike locator. Now that bike stealing baddie took my bike and I used this technology and it got it back for me. Now, I had no idea, genuinely, I had no idea where they'd gone. They could have gone left and gone to Manchester. They could have gone right and gone to Birmingham. Turns out they only went a few miles down the road. But by using this technology, I found it. Yes, the Scout costs more than an AirTag, but it's more than an AirTag. Unlike an AirTag, this is rechargeable. And unlike an AirTag, this is also an alarm. An AirTag will help you get your bike back should it get stolen, but it won't tell you someone's trying to steal it. The benefits of using this are obvious, and I think I've gone some way to prove that, but are there any negatives to using it? In order to receive a push notification to your mobile phone that your bike alarm is going off, the Nog Scout and the mobile must be within Bluetooth range of each other. If they're not, you will not be notified that the alarm's going off. 
Apple revised their Find My network when they released the AirTag. This was on the back of stalking. Apple may send a push notification through to an iPhone user advising them that they are being tracked by a device that is not associated to them. If this device is disconnected from its owner and spends enough time traveling with another iPhone user and that user goes to a place they frequent regularly, say home or work for example, they may get a push notification through to their phone telling them that they are being tracked by a device that is not associated to them. So Apple's anti-stalking rules apply when using this device. Does that mean if an Apple user steals your bike, they'll immediately get notified that they're being tracked? No, it doesn't work like that. Now, I personally cannot think of any reason why you wouldn't want to use one of these, but I can't speak for everyone, can I? So I've given it a lot of thought, and thought of what reasons may people say, no, I don't want to use one. And the first and the most obvious with cyclists and the weight weenies is I don't want to add excess weight to my bike, which is fine. I can understand somebody saying that. But let's look at that closer. This weighs 22 grams. Now, let me give that some perspective for you. This rather posh drinks bottle, not the whole bottle, just the lid. 22 grams. That lid weighs exactly the same amount. Well, let's do another one for you. This delicious Kit Kat chocolate bar, two finger variety, that also weighs 22 grams. I don't want yet another thing to look after and manage and charge on my bike. Yes, agreed. You will need to charge it a few times a year and the app will let you know when it drops below 20%. But they cost 50 pounds. Yes, it does. But to look at it another way, it costs 1% of what that bike cost me. So for me personally, that is staying on my bike. After all, why would I take it off? Now, if you're one of those people that regularly struggles with tubeless, you should watch that video next. Or if you would like to know how I replaced all the bearings in a free hub and saved myself having to buy a new one, watch that video down there. Thanks for watching.